This is all too much. Go! Drive! I have no idea where we are. This doesn't look like anything familiar. I think she's losing memory. Have you guys noticed that? How dare him? I control men. Anybody could look at her and tell this is not just alcohol. There's something more going on. Welcome back to GMA3. That is a look at the new Lifetime documentary, Where is Wendy Williams? Executive produced by Wendy Williams. Mm -hmm. And just days before its premiere, we're learning new details about the health of the former daytime talk show host. After much speculation, Wendy's team is saying that she has been diagnosed with a form of dementia. Dr. Darian is back with us and also joining us here in the studio is neurologist Dr. Leah Kroll, who is also an assistant professor of neurology at Temple University. It's good to have you here. And uh, first, I want to point out that her team, her care team, released a statement saying in part, and I want to quote it, in 2023, after undergoing a battery of medical tests, Wendy was officially diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontal temporal dementia. Uh, receiving a diagnosis has enabled Wendy to receive the medical care that she requires, end quote, and we should point out that neither of you have treated her. But if you could, doctor, walk us through uh, the diagnosis here. So Wendy Williams representatives have said she has primary progressive aphasia. This is a subtype of frontotemporal dementia, which is basically not your average dementia. This is a rare disease. It affects younger people, 40s to 60s, and it predominantly affects language and behavior. So in terms of language, we're talking about difficulties, understanding speech, producing speech, reading, writing. I mean, communication can really be affected. And then with behavior, that might look like dramatic changes in personality. It might look like difficulties with impulse control, poor decision making. The list goes on and it looks very different on different people. And this is the same thing that Bruce Willis was diagnosed with. So how is something like this diagnosed? Generally, there's no one test that we can run that can give us the answer. So it has to be an overall clinical judgment that's made by a neurologist. And that will involve a neurologic exam, speaking with the patient and their family, getting some brain imaging done, some neuropsychological testing, and then putting all of those puzzle pieces together. The other thing I want to mention here, Eva, it's so great you brought up Bruce Willis because here's another reason this is hard to diagnose. It's not easy to talk about these symptoms. It's brutal, really, to talk about language changes, behavioral changes. And so for Bruce Willis and Wendy Williams and their families to come out and be open about this is such a beautiful gift. It's brave, it's generous, and it gives people an in to some of those difficult conversations, just making talking about these symptoms with your loved ones and your families a little easier. How rare is this? It's quite rare. So. Under 65, it represents 10% of dementia cases, and over 65, only about 2%. Yeah, Dr. Kroll, we've worked together clinically in the hospital. We've seen the same similar patient situations and been in those difficult moments, like you said, with those difficult conversations. Now, I know that it's difficult to just list all of the warning signs, but what are some top red flags that you would recommend people know about? Yeah, Dr. Daring, you're absolutely right. Dementia is so complex and so variable from person to person that we couldn't possibly give an exhaustive list of every sign. But what I think is important for people to understand are patterns of memory changes, behavior changes, and language changes. They're starting to interfere with their ability to function in daily life. So some common examples of that would be memory changes that threaten safety, like forgetting you left food on the stove, uh, getting lost in your own neighborhood, um, other things to look out for would be difficulties negotiating sort of everyday interactions. So this might look like having trouble checking out at the grocery store or going to the bank and not being able to navigate that interaction. And finally, if communication is slipping to the point where other people are having to jump in and speak on your behalf more and more frequently, those would be just some of the common signs to look out for. So how can one prevent it? Can you keep it from happening to you? Well, with frontotemporal dementia, we do know that about 40% of these cases are genetic. Um, and so in that sense, we really can't prevent it. Uh, I do think it's important to understand that taking care of your brain health overall is helpful. So things like the Mediterranean diet, getting good exercise, staying on top of whether your hearing's intact, um, you know, those sorts of things will, will benefit everyone in the long term. 
Dr. Jerry, and this is the kind of thing that affects not just the patient, yeah. but the caregiver. Yeah, absolutely. What advice would you have for family members? Such an important question. It's estimated that 16% of Americans operate as caregivers for their loved ones within this country. And I think the best advice is making sure that you take care of yourself, prioritizing your sleep, prioritizing your diet, reaching out for help. There are many community support groups that provide not only assistance and education, but also ability to help you cope. And then of course, reaching out to your primary care physician if you need of a referral, just again, to make sure that your mental health and your well-being is taken care of. Prioritizing yourself in that moment is really important. And it's so important because a lot of times caregivers, they put themselves on the back of the burner. And understandably so. And I've been in that moment in that emergency room having these difficult conversations, consulting people like Leah and her team. And it's really, really difficult. But again, that hard reminder, you need to take care of yourself is what I always try to remind patients and their families of. Thank you, Beth, for being here. Of course. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.